Well, let's get started painting this cute little hummingbird. I've painted many hummingbirds and I wish I could say they have gotten easier for me, but they haven't. Each one is a unique challenge. They're such a delicate little creature and I just look at my inspiration photo and I think, how can I make this my own? Not worrying about all the intricate detail, but just kind of getting a hint of detail. But I start off here just wetting down my paper. I want my first layer just to be really soft. I'm just wetting all the areas that I'm going to be painting with my burnt sienna. When I first put on the color, it's very vibrant. And I think, oh, what a beautiful color. And as it dries, it kind of softens as it soaks into the paper and it kind of changes color. So we'll build color as we go. This is just our first layer. And as I paint other colors on top of this, this will still continue to kind of peek through and it will kind of help create the depth in the, in the, in the feathers as we go. It's very easy for me to get kind of caught up in the detail in the very beginning. I'm really trying not to. As I look at my inspiration photo and I see all that detail, it's hard for my brain to kind of disengage from that and just focus on the first layer. So I'm always kind of checking myself as I go to kind of bring my brain back to this is the first layer. I don't have to worry about all the little feathery detail just yet. But I'm pretty lucky. I have hummingbirds that stick around year round. I have maybe about six or seven that stay the winter. During the spring, I probably get at least 30. And during the summer, maybe another 20 stick around. So I always have feeders full and ready for these little sugar guzzlers. But I never get tired of watching them. I'm taking my burnt sienna and some of my Daniel Smith Moon Glow. And it kind of deepens that that burnt sienna. Now if you don't have moon glow, you could easily just use a raw umber instead. What I really like about the Daniel Smith moon glow is that it's kind of a purpley blue. It even has a little bit of a, a green in there and it kind of gradiates and it kind of spreads and it creates actually more colors as it dries than what you see right now and it just gives such a soft wonderful little blend of colors without even really having to try that hard so I would suggest investing in a tube of Daniel Smith Moon Glow my daughter introduced me to that color I don't know that I would ever even have known it existed if she hadn't told me about it and once I bought it I thought I will never go back I use it for shadows I use it to deepen my colors. It's just so incredibly versatile. I'm still working wet on wet here. I'm going to kind of bring in a little shadow. You see on the wing, it's a little deeper there, but I just still want those colors just to kind of blend softly on top of each other. The wet on wet technique works really well for these beginning layers one of my go-to techniques to kind of keep creating that soft look. And now let that first layer dry. And this is kind of where it starts getting fun. I'm going to start bringing in some color, just pre-wetting the area that I'm going to work in. Just like before, I'm going to want those colors to spread softly. I'm using serpentine green here. I really love this green. It dries very vibrant. Now, if you don't have this color, you really can use any green that you want to. I'm just trying to go for a very bright, vibrant hummingbird here. Just like anything, you use the colors that you have. There's so many colors that I would love to have that I just don't even have yet. So I just use what I have in my little watercolor toolbox. Now I'm just adding a little watery mixture of that green. Something that I like to do, even if the picture doesn't show it, is I try to tie in the different parts of my painting using similar colors. So I just add in a, a light wash of that green. I'm just deepening that green. It almost looks like an olive green once I mix that moon glow and serpentine together. And now I'm just adding in the shadows, 
adding a little dimension in there not really adding detail it's just kind of a soft way to add in some shadow and just a hint of detail bringing that color into the wings like I said before it just kind of helps tie everything together I'm just softening the old chest area a little bit I'm just dropping in a little bit of that green into those bottom feathers I let the green dry and now I'm going to pre-wet the area where I'm going to bring in my quinacridone rose this is kind of my favorite part it's just bringing in that burst of color just dropping in that rose I want this color to stay really vibrant so I'm putting a decent amount of color in there it's kind of working slowly with my number three brush the head is so tiny and sometimes it's hard to work around the areas of the face now I'm going to add a little bit of that rose into my to my feathers as I'm putting this down I'm realizing that it's a little too bright so after I get it down, I'm just going to tap out a little bit of that color with my paper towel. It'll just leave a little hint of that pink left on the page. It'll just be soft. Those hummingbird feathers really shimmer lots of different colors. I decided for my next layer that I'm going to use some sap green in those green feathers. We're now starting to build our detail. But we still want to keep it soft, not too intricate some areas I'm going a little darker and some areas I'm doing a little more watery we want it to have a little dimension to it so we don't want every little feather to look the same I'm just going to spend the next few minutes just adding in my feathers just soft little shadows soft little detail Sometimes to create detail we have to remove color so I have a wet brush and a paper towel and I'm just kind of scrubbing lightly you can kind of see how that detail just kind of softens those wings a little bit it's a fun little technique to use we always think that we're we need to add more color for detail but sometimes we need to remove color for detail I'm just using some more of my moon glow I'm just building more shadows those shadows kind of help those lighter feathers kind of pop I'm bringing out my Payne's gray we're going to work on the beak and the eye this part is kind of challenging I'm using my liner brush it's one of my smaller brushes but it's still challenging to get that thin little detail so I'm just going to work slowly getting in my beak Luckily, it doesn't have much detail to it. I almost don't breathe when I'm painting the, the eye and the beak. It's like any little movement can make it go all wrong. So this part kind of stresses me out a little bit. It's time to add our detail with our monacridone rose just want soft little feathery detail the little shadows of those pink feathers
decide here to add in a little white gouache. Those little white feathers are really soft. I'm just kind of adding in a little of that detail. I'm going to be adding some of that gouache into some little highlights on the feathers. There's just sometimes you just can't save out little bits of white. So I just using my gouache sparingly, my little liner brush, just adding in little bits of detail. Trying to work on that eye a little bit more. We're just adding the last little bit of detail with our white gouache. There we have our cute little hummingbird. It doesn't look exactly like the inspiration photo, but it's my own. It's my own little hummingbird. Now you give it a try.